perhaps no fortunate role has ever had as many ramifications as Allen Houston's winning shot in the do or die game five of the 1999 first round series between the Knicks and the Miami Heat. In episode six of the series, What If, Chris Miles examines what might have happened if Houston's lucky bounce wasn't so lucky. Our players are anxious to, to get back and play. We're anxious to now be able to join hands with, with David and Russ and the owners of the 29 teams uh, and to, to really create a, a strong and familial relationship. I don't ever take anything to say or done in business personal. You know, anytime I negotiate a big deal, you know, I might say some things to the guy across the table, but I hope he doesn't take it personal. If he says something to me, I don't take it personal. We're comfortable that if we work hard, that uh, our fans will uh, give us the opportunity to uh, redeem ourselves. The 98-99 season was unlike any other. A 204-day lockout, the longest in league history, pushed back open at night to February 5th and cut the regular season to 50 games. 50 games, 50 games. It's, we got to get back out there and uh, get the job done. Hopefully I can get me a championship in, 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 with 50 games. The condensed season was especially challenging for Patrick Ewing's Knicks, and most notably, their embattled fourth-year head coach, Jeff Van Gundy. We played exceptionally poorly early in that 99 shortened season. You know, it was a lockout season. We made two major trades, uh, Latrell Sprewell for John Starks and Chris Mills and uh, Marcus Camby for Charles Oakley. So we didn't have a lot of time to get together. We had poor chemistry, poor togetherness. I think with the Knicks, they just didn't have the timing down. The whole year was topsy-turvy, and coaches trying to implement their game plans, they, they just never quite got it right in the regular season. The Knicks, in that shortened season, 50 games, there was a lot of drama. Plus, the Eastern Conference was very good back then. It was very competitive, and it just took a while for that to blend, and it really started to blend right at the end of that regular season, and then come playoff time, that's when they were off and running. The Knicks won six of their final eight games to nail down the eighth and final playoff spot in the East and set up a best of five first round series with the number one seed and their number one rival, the Miami Heat. The Knicks were much better than the eighth seed. You know, we knew, those of us who covered and been around the team, we recognized right away when they slipped into the playoffs at the very end of the season, that they were going to be a tough out uh, given you know the kind of talent they had. We were playing very well going into the playoffs and we would have been a 50 win team if it had been a regular season uh, of 82 games uh, but because it was the lockout shortened 50 game season you know we were the eighth seed and that was really unfortunate for Miami because we were probably the third best team in the Eastern Conference. The team split the first four games, none closer than 10 points, to set up a do-or-die game five in Miami. The Knicks battled back from 13 down and trailed by a point with the ball in 19.9 seconds left. Uh, I had a pretty good seat because if you remember the play, Latrell Sprewell had the ball and he made a big mistake. He dribbled himself into a corner and Terry Porter was there and the ball went out. But the ball was awarded to the Knicks. No timeouts for the Knicks. We were really disjointed on the last possession. Sprewell was trying to create something off a of pick and roll. Bad possession, gets knocked out, and we ran triangle down, which is a isolation up at the top of the key for Allen Houston. And Gundy calls a play, a triangle, that usually means something for Ewing. Allen Houston, Houston ducks under, got it! With eight tenths left! I'll tell you, I, I thought I sh kind of short-armed it at first. Um, but uh, it hung up there, uh, seemed like two minutes instead of two seconds. I believe it went rim, backboard, in, and then it was sheer ecstasy. Life in basketball, you know, has uh, a lot of suffering in it, and uh, we will suffer this one. I was at that game, covered that game, and remember thinking, that's, there's no chance that ball's going in. <laughs> Again, I'll say it again, it, people were trying to judge each individual on our team too early, and the, t uh, the team too early in this short season, they played great basketball the last, 
uh, three and a half weeks to a month, and I couldn't be happier for them because they deserve that. You know, it's funny, too. After that shot was made, the Knicks beat, obviously, Miami. They go on to the next round. They play Atlanta. They go right from Miami to Atlanta. They win those two games. One of the big moments, of course, is Marcus Camby having that dunk on Dikembe Mutombo, which I really thought was the defining moment of that series. By the time the Knicks came back to New York to play game three, think about what had happened. They had beaten Miami and Pat Riley. They were up 2-0. So you want to talk about a building that was on fire. And when the Knicks started winning in that game, the crowd started chanting Jeff Van Gundy. Well, a month earlier, it was Jeff Van Gundy, and then they finished with sucks. So, you know, it, you know, fans are fickle, and it's all uh, based on uh, performance of the team. Right now, there's a chair here at the Garden. Jeff Van Gundy is what the fans are chanting. A wonderful moment for Jeff Van Gundy. I'll tell you what, uh, seriously, there are very few things that you remember as a coach in vivid detail as you go along in your life, but that's one that I'll never forget. The Knicks went on to sweep the Hawks, then beat the Pacers in six in the Eastern Conference Finals. However, they lost Hall of Famer Patrick Ewing in game two of that series to a partially torn Achilles. Without him, New York fell to the Spurs in the finals in just five games. Do you think if the Knicks have Ewing, they beat the Spurs? I'm not so sure if they do, I, you know, because Patrick was getting up there a little bit. It would have certainly helped. So the Knicks were really beaten up. Not only Patrick not being able to play, but you also had Larry Johnson not 100%. But I would take my chances with any uh, against anybody uh, with a healthy Patrick Ewing. Larry Johnson was not healthy in that series either. He had sprained his knee in our game six at home against the Pacers. So, yeah, we had our injuries, but that's part of it. And... Uh, the Spurs were very, very worthy champions. The run to the finals earned Van Gundy a contract extension. But what if Allen Houston's runner had rimmed out and knocked out the Knicks in the first round? If the shot bounces out, he's probably done in New York. So that's a career changer. And who knows what that means for Jeff down the road. Jeff Van Gundy is, he has said it, many, many times, if that ball had not gone in, the entire Nick structure would have been fired. I mean, it just changed the course of the lives of everybody in the front office. Well, I would have been fired, and I think that's how delicate uh, success and failure is in professional sports. When the ball's in the air, good coach, bad coach, good coach, bad coach, good coach, and it bounces in, and you get to live another day. There's no doubt in my mind, if they lose that series, they fire Jeff Van Gundy. And so what do they do then? Well, their president at the time was Dave Checkets, and Dave Checkets was a guy who liked to make big splashes and big moves. He's in New York, big market. I have no doubt in my mind, they would have gone all in to bring Phil Jackson in as their head coach. If that ball bounces out, you know, I think it's very likely that Van Gundy is out. Uh, and, there might have been a remake right there. I mean, that was the year that Dave Checkets was trying to sign Phil on the sly. And, you know, for all we know, had that position opened up, you know, that, that might have happened back then, only with Phil as a coach. If the Knicks get Phil Jackson in 2000, there is no Lakers, there is no three-peat, there is no Kobe and Shaq. They probably trade Kobe or Shaq well before then because the two of them, as we know, weren't getting along. Phil was the guy that kept that whole thing together. That shot by Alan Houston, if it bounces out, a lot of things change. Jeff Van Gundy probably isn't the coach. And then who comes in? Is it going to be Phil Jackson? If Phil Jackson comes in, are they looking to get rid of Patrick Ewing? Are they looking to get rid of other players? If they didn't get Phil, I think they would have gone after John Thompson. Because John was Patrick's coach in college at Georgetown. John always was curious about coaching in the NBA. He never saw a job that really appealed to him, you know, a position that really appealed to him, a city that really appealed to him. I think they would have gone after John Thompson if they didn't get Phil Jackson. It's, it's hard to know what Jeff's path would have been. Um, I think that the ball bouncing in helped create the legend of, of, of Jeff Van Gundy. I mean, 
I'm not going to say he wasn't well thought of to that point, but certainly that run to the finals, you know, helped cement Jeff as his own man. So Jeff by that time had become a big time folk hero. And I think people kind of identified with him as the guy just trying to work as hard as he can every day, try to make the team good, and his boss was trying to stick it to him. He needed that win. He needed that victory in order to change his persona. And sometimes that's not fair. The bounce of the ball shouldn't always dictate the future of a head coach, a player, a GM. But this is why we love sports. This is part of the attraction. It's amazing living that back and, and watching it is a fantastic piece. You think about a number of things, the game of inches that it is. Yeah. I think about how tight the conference was then because mm -hmm. there was no way that Miami was a one to the Knicks being an eight. No. They were year in and year out tight like this where now you look at the one and you think about where the Celtics are or where maybe the Cavaliers are compared to the eight, nine teams. It's not even close to that. Very, very different years back. Yeah, right? very, very different that year. Our Magic team was right in the hunt, too. Shaq's about to leave and Penny and all that stuff is going on in Orlando. And you're watching that shot and you're saying, wow, if he misses that shot to everything everyone talks about, I think everything changes in New York. So now you look at Allen Houston as one of those guys in New York, a folk hero, because that shot goes in and keeps everybody's career going in the right direction he wants to go, Sam. Well, I was vice president of Player Association during that lockout, and I remember the first thing, all the money we lost. <laughs> <laughs> Second, when we did start back playing, I hurt my knee on, in the eighth game out of ten That's nights because right. we was playing three travel, three travel, and then yeah. back to back. So it was a tough year that year. I mean, everybody was dropping because we had, what, Four days of training camp. That's it. And then we started playing games. So it was just a brutal, brutal schedule. And I do remember the challenges that coaches was doing. Can you be that team to win eight games in 10 days? Right. That was our goal, right. to try to win eight games in 10 days because we knew how difficult it was going to be. I remember that eighth game. I couldn't even feel my legs then. Yeah. <laughs> I had no. no idea what city I was in. All I remember is hitting a pop in my knee. And that was it. And the other thing is you could do a whole other piece on just that rivalry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For those oh, yeah. who are young oh, yeah. that are watching this now that don't realize, hey, hey Pat Riley hey. and the whole, uh, the whole thing. Casey, yeah. when I played for the Forget Pacers, it. we hated the Knicks. We didn't speak to each other in the summertime. We didn't talk to each other when yeah. we played you guys. Exactly. And we knocked you yeah. guys out. That's right. When I saw you That's in the right. summertime, we're no, we hey, how you doing, no right. loving and uh-uh. Right. We didn't like each other because we understood in order to achieve our goal, we had to beat them. Right. And so that was our mindset. We didn't like.